and now we have that much space probably as close as you can go yeah get your squeezy hammer at a parts store near you i'll ride it oh On today's episode of Cars and Cameras, we are starting a DIY-friendly extensive suspension overhaul on our two-stroke swapped Murray Kilowatt, starting at the back and then moving to the front. So this was a free engine given to us by a fan a few years ago. It's a 440 two-stroke uh, off of an old Kawasaki snowmobile, and it should make about 38 horsepower, but it's not running quite right. We're gonna talk more about that later. But anyway, it has the juice. Now it needs to be able to go around corners without flipping it because a few years ago, I did flip it. So in today's episode, we're gonna be building all new rear suspension while keeping it somewhat DIY friendly. So we're gonna lower it down for a lower center of gravity. We're gonna widen the rear track width for more cornering stability. We're also gonna move the engine because remember our sprocket would come in contact with the bottom of the engine under suspension compression. So we have our work cut out for us. All of our parts are gonna be coming from gopowersports.com today. The new live axle kit, the new hangers, uh, the new suspension components as well. You can check all those out at links in the description for your own Murray Kilowatt mini bike or go-kart. Anyway, let's get started. So again, the whole challenge today is in moving the engine forward and up because look at that carburetor spacing right now. It's almost non-existent. So it looks like Ike is starting by taking the belt off the old torque converter setup. Well, I'm 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 taking the uh, the bolt off the end. I'm I'm just checking all the keyways and and make sure everything's still lined up because you know we we could have another issue other than a slipping belt. It could be uh, a pulley slipping on a jack sh a shaft or whatever. So I'm just going through everything while doing everything else. Kiss method. Yep. So tight. Gotta move the uh, the engine plate. In order to get that one bolt out. Yep. Oh, look at that. Wow. That's funny. Huh? Nothing. So I have two bolts left on this engine. And once we get this thing, the bolts off, we can move this engine where we want to, kind of set it up to the best location and figure out how to get this thing bolted back down. <laughs> yeah. We may be off the floor, but still keeping it real with the <laughs> boards. Yeah, we're just gonna drill holes in the boards and we're gonna bolt, bolt it down. Yeah. yeah, wood screw it yeah. to the boards. Yes. I'm still confused. We're, We're going. Picking up the engine. Picking up the engine and shoving this in. We're going forward and picking up with the engine and shoving the boards under. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Alright. Huh. Huh. Oops. Yeah, it's alright. Uh, that shouldn't be a problem. No. It's all on that, isn't it? Um, how about, about how about I lift up on this side and you shove these boards up? You ready? Yeah. Here we go. That's two. All right. That's it. Whew. Okay. Well, that. Has lifted it up. We still have clearance. I mean, they, this gets hot. Yeah. So we lifted the engine about an inch. And we moved it forward about an inch. Yeah, and see, it's still close. And we're talking about building an adapter to angle that carburetor level. Um, but then the engine's going to have to go farther forward. And the problem with that is the exhaust is getting real close to the seat. So there are pretty much two ways to build out this rear suspension. There's 
an easy way that's going to take not a lot of time and then there's a hard way that's going to take a ton of time but it's going to give us better results uh <laughs> the problem with the hard way is that we just can't see a way of doing it and that is really scooting the engine over uh is one of the options so that the sprocket clears the engine there because before we were having well the sprocket was hitting the bottom of the engine case yeah and uh if we put a bigger sprocket on there it's going to get worse right so uh <laughs> we could leave the engine low but scoot it over but then that leaves a big problem for where the belt needs to go and our driven pulley needs to be somewhere over here and we need to keep the pivot point with the pivot point on the rear swing arm or else we're going to have a lot of chain tightening and loosening so it's going to be a lot more involved than than what we want to do i think to keep this thing somewhat simple and, and diy friendly so what we're going to do is raise the engine build some spacers raise the engine about two inches so that we uh, have clearance for the carburetor like we've talked about inch and a half inch and a half yeah and uh uh, build a new swing arm. It's going to be super simple. One piece of one and a quarter tube with two bends in it and get some Go Power Sports axle hangers because as you can see there, there's plenty of room to just raise the axle on this thing. And that way we don't have to mess with the shock placement at all. We get a lift with the same uh, stiffness. and A drop. Yeah, a, a, a drop with the same stiffness. And we like the shocks how they're set up now so it felt really really good why mess with a good thing right so we're just going to get to bending some tube and building our own swing arm going the simple method ike removed the exhaust and engine to measure and mark where new holes needed to be drilled in the engine plate for the new engine placement Remember, we need to raise the engine to give more clearance for the new larger rear sprocket and lowered suspension. I, meanwhile, carefully measured our piece of one and a quarter tube to turn it into our new swing arm. Our Rogue Fab tubing bender has a bit of a learning curve, but it is extremely satisfying when you measure and execute multiple bends and it fits perfectly first try, like what happened today. After making his modifications, Ike reinstalled the engine with the risers, with just enough room for the carburetor to fit. So I'm removing the spring and the swing arm, and Charles is working on welding up the exhaust. Uh, so the plan is we're gonna be building our very own swing arm uh, our way and hopefully it'll be better. It'll be fine, right? Exactly. Carburetor's installed and I spent a couple hours last Friday doing a deep clean on it because we have had a running issue with this engine and a deep clean on the carburetor is just one step in the, in the process. I, I kind of feel like that we've had this running problem since day one. Since day one. I, I kind of feel it, but I couldn't find that, any info on it, but you know, in the past videos if we had that issue, but I'm, I'm thinking we did, so, but it'll be fine, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Just like Pat said. That's right. Just for a little bit of extra context here, we are having some kind of running issue with this engine, and we're starting by rebuilding the carburetor. Uh, when we rode it the other day for the first time in years, it was peppy at first, but it didn't feel like the 38 horsepower that this engine should produce. And then when we checked into it, full throttle was only half up on the carburetor slide, and anything past that, it would make a really nasty bogging sound. So that's an issue that we need to chase down and uh, figure out before this thing is going to be ready for the track. Anyway, back to the suspension.
so we got the swing arm uh, tacked in place now we're going to install the shock and try to figure out the best location for the lower shock tabs that worked out yeah I didn't expect that to work. Are you ready? Yeah, dude. Cover? Yep. I think that work. It's looking good to me. <laughs> They're not going to be very strong, but... Well, we're going to yeah, add that's... some gussets. we can move it to the other shop and weld her up. What do you say? Sounds good to me. All right. Unless, unless you want to go ahead and set up the axle too. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, right this here. should be done in a second. Okay. Let's Sounds see. cool. Oh. Yes, sir. Be gentle with it. Well, I mean, if it breaks, it breaks. <clears throat> we have the jacks under there. That's the uh, the actual like height before. Oh. So we can set up so we need an axle the, so we need with hangers. Yeah. And we can put them just right there, mm -hmm. and then we can set some blocks under it to lift it, and we'll be able to figure out how much higher uh, we lifted it and all that good stuff. So yeah. that's my thought. That'll work. Yeah, that'll show us the difference. Yeah, I think I think we're gonna have uh, a minimum of two inch difference. Okay. That's that's my thought. That's what we want, right? Wow. Man, that. that you're fast. Huge. That looks good. Is, we're is talking the biggest brake rotor I think we've ever put We're on talking some check. stopping power yeah. here. A big one. All right. It's good. Take it. Take it a little too far now. Oh, it's just a tad. But I think it might match his side. Okay. <laughs> that's all we, that's all we need. All right, so the rear axle is totally tacked in, isn't it, boys? Yes, sir. Yes. Sweet. So that means it's time to take it next door to get it completely welded up. Yep. And yep. So how exactly did we lower this now that we're done and we can give them a good visual? Uh, what we did was we, uh, this bar right here, on the last one, it was dropped a little bit, so we made it perfectly parallel with the frame, which lifted it a little bit. Not much, but a little bit. Uh, so and that lifted it lifted this okay. higher which, which in turns lowered sure lowered okay. it. so uh, and the biggest way we've lowered it is these axle hangers we had a big fat space between the axle and the frame here and now we have that much space probably as close as you can go yeah good so, stuff uh, and, I'm happy with it. Yeah, I mean, this thing it didn't get lowered very much, but every little bit is going to help. And then, and we case. did it on a budget. And yeah. we did it on a budget. Uh, if we if we wanted it lower, we would have had to change uh, this whole back half of the go kart, which is going to take a lot of time and extra money. And, and we don't want to cut. And this I didn't. Up. I didn't want to cut up this frame. So you know, this right here is all new. We still got the original right there on the floor and it'll be able to go just right back in anytime we feel like it. So uh, we're not really changing anything mm -hmm. permanent on this cart, so. All right, front bolt. Cool. Now let's leave the bushings. Uh, yeah, I was gonna take the bushings out because you don't want to get them damaged while well. Or lost. Or lost, yeah. Can lose it in the snow. Off to the welder. I think we made it a little bit lighter too. Uh, it looks a little bit lighter. Yeah, that's, look at all that, that's quarter inch right there. Not bad. Look at that. All welded up. We even have bushings. Oh, sorry. No, that was me. Oh, okay.
Well, oh, here, here we go. Here's my squeezy hammer. Get you, get your, get your squeezy hammer at a parts store near you. Hey, you know, you know what a, blow, you know what a blowtorch is called? That's a spicy hammer. <laughs> all right, so now all we got to do is add this axle to our live axle kit from Go Power Sports. We have our split sprocket hub, and we also have our uh, disc brake hub, all from Go Power Sports. You can check them out in the link in the description. Charles, you ready to uh, get this axle in there? Absolutely. All right, here we go. Hold on, let me get the bearing straight. Sure, sure. There we go. All right. All right, there we go. Coming down. Yep. Picks up an extra few mile an hour right there at the end. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good. All right. Oh, wow. Kind of loosey juicy. But the shocks are at the softest point. Okay. So we can, we can stick them up. Oh, it, it looks like we dropped it quite a bit. I oh, mean, yeah. Like, Here, hold on. You ready? Oh gosh, it's gonna roll off now. Nah, there's, there's no brakes. Go ahead and go ahead and roll it off so we can see what it looks like on the ground. All right, I'm good. Okay, I'll, I'll ride it. Oh! <laughs> Forgot about our ramps. <laughs> I'm a little shorter now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's too uh, loosey juicy in the rear. What do you guys think? Well, I'll tighten it up. Yeah, that's the nice thing. We can tighten it a ton. Yeah. But it's definitely lower. Yeah. No definitely doubt. lower. It's what we wanted. Yep. Cool. Well, we're still waiting on a belt from our sponsor, GoPowerSports.com, and we need to do the rear brakes at the same time as we do our front brakes. So we're not ready to take for a test drive yet, but I think we did a good job. We had to choose between a DIY friendly, easy method that would get us some drop or cut the whole back end of this go kart off and basically start from scratch. And I think considering we chose the easy route, things turned out pretty well. So we are definitely going to need to tighten these shocks. And once we get the front end built and the whole thing dialed in, it's going to be ready for the track. So thanks for watching, everybody. Leave a thumbs up if you're enjoying the two-stroke content. We'll catch you next time. Thanks again for tuning in to today's episode, everybody. Catch us tonight going live on the Cars and Cameras YouTube channel. We're bringing back the Cars and Cameras podcast at the wheel with Cars and Cameras, this time in HD. Ike here inherited a house owned by a hundred year old person uh, and this person was a hoarder. So we're gonna hear the story of Ike going through this house and cleaning out a house that hasn't been gone in in, in, in years and it hasn't been cleaned since probably before I was born. So catch that tonight. That's uh, at the Cars and Cameras uh, YouTube channel. You can catch it live at 8 p.m. Be there. If you miss it, you can catch it at a later date on our podcast channel at The Wheel with Cars and Cameras. See you then. You can definitely tell, man, it's, it's I low. Like it. I like it. It's almost like being around your truck. It's like you're used to trucks being a certain uh, height, and then you come you up see. on this one, and you're like, Whoa, did I, I get I taller? Can, I kind of yeah, like it. Kinda like it. <laughs>